Hey, yo, you want free GPU? Okay, just give me your GPU and then I'll give you another GPU. Hey, yo, you want three phones? Just buy this one phone. You got three. Hey, yo, you want to know what Abraham Lincoln really looked like? Okay, you just need to get rid of some of the nanometers that were bad in the photography back then. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. Hey, yo, you want some hot news? We're going to be delivering the hottest tech news that I can find across the internet, and it's going to be a doozy today. In case you're hot from mining, let me tell you that there is apparently a scam going around. It's currently only in China, but who's to say it might not make it? way to our shores here in America where the scammers are impersonating AMD and XFX and saying, hey, there's something wrong with that RX 580 you have. And you would think that all they're trying to do is get these gamers to turn in their RX 580s to get something else in the future, but never actually receive anything. But no, 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 no. It's actually kind of more ingenious than that because apparently these scammers are giving back in a 1050 Ti or 1063 gig in return for the RX 580 being turned in. And the reason that this is genius is because likely these miners purchased these ages ago and then as the ethereum dag files gotten bigger they have aged out of being useful the 1050 ti and 1063 gig not really as good of mining cards at this point so if the miners already had these dead weight products on their hand they could potentially scalp them or they could just do a trading program where they don't necessarily have to go through all of the accounting that's necessary to selling and buying and so they're trading in these rx 580s from other customers by lying to them, by scamming them, but then getting them a 1050 Ti or 1063 gig so that they can offload the useless GPUs that they have. This is kind of brilliant. Obviously, really deceptive. Obviously, not great. Both AMD and XFX in China have released statements saying, hey, this is this is a scam. Don't buy into it. But would you do it? Let's just say this, there's like this giant mining organization that opens up and is like, hey, we want your Vega 64s or your Radeon 7s and we'll give you like a 1070 in return because we don't want these NVIDIA GPUs. They suck at mining. Would you do it? Is that something you're open to? Maybe they'd have to sweeten it with cash. As long as they're not scamming you, I don't necessarily see the harm, but obviously there's harm in this topic. But while miners are trying to get you to trade in your GPUs for less effective mining ones, I want you to trade in your wallet for a more effective slimmed down version in today's video sponsor, The Ridge. These wallets are sleek, they're industrial, they're light, they don't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously can change up your entire pocket situation. Most people are still using the wallets designed back in the 90s, carrying around old receipts. You don't need to even worry about that with the Ridge wallets. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium and my personal favorite, this matte white. And if this wasn't enough to win you over yet, they have 40,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty and you could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. So maybe swap it in, my friends. And the Rich team's so confident in their product that they'll let you try it out for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. So check them out at the link in the video description, ridge.com forward slash hot news. You can get 10% off today and free worldwide shipping and returns. Again, that's ridge.com forward slash hot news. What's also hot is AMD. That joke is, is that old? Is that aged at this point? Is Nvidia the hot one or is it Intel? I don't really know how we make fun of these people anymore, but AMD, according to a rumor, which we can take this with the biggest grain of a mining salt that you can find on the entire earth. Once we get to Ryzen 7000, which is in two generations from now, every single CPU is gonna come with an integrated graphics. Yes, all APUs from Raphael onwards, allegedly, supposedly, according to this picture right here. And according to NVIDIA, so less of a rumor, they're gonna be implementing DLSS into Unity by the end of 2021. This is gonna be through the high definition render pipeline before the end of the year. So NVIDIA implementing one of their best features in more areas, getting it in the hands of game developers so that we can experience ray tracing and DLSS like never before. RTX on my friends, but arguably one of the best features that NVIDIA rolled out is RTX voice. And now that is getting native app support for OBS with the noise canceling tech being worked in to OBS directly. So now you just need to click a few buttons in OBS and blow a leaf blower into your microphone and you're good to go. <laughs> 
It's my leaf blower impersonation. And Intel thinks that Nvidia is impersonating them, at least according to the CEO of Intel, saying that, hey, that Nvidia CPU that they're launching, the ARM-based one, they are responding to us. We are not responding to them. Need I remind you that we announced our Ice-like processors for servers last week with an extraordinarily positive response. And in Ice-like, we have extraordinary expansions in the AI capabilities. Nvidia is responding to us. It is not us responding to them. Clearly, this idea of CPUs that are AI enhanced is the domain where Intel is a dramatic leader. Don't forget, friends. Intel better than Nvidia. Facts. Doom. Do, 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 do. And PlayStation 5 is now better with the latest firmware update that came out. We already detailed this in a previous episode of Hot News, but there were some unmentioned improvements that came about in the realm of HDR and 120 Hertz. Apparently, PlayStation 5s were brute forcing HDR in certain scenarios, kind of like on Windows where you turn HDR on and it ruins all of the colors because it's not HDR compatible, but it's putting it on anyways. Apparently, the PlayStation 5 was doing that, and now it won't because you have the option to not do that, as well as the 120 Hertz greater supports coming out for different PC monitors. No variable refresh rate support at this point, but more 120 Hertz support. And the support for Ludwig was huge because he is now the most subscribed streamer on Twitch after ending his 31 day subathon where he now has over 282,000 subscribers beating out the previous record by Ninja over on Twitch. Apex Legends now has 100 million players, which is a pretty big number. And we got details on the Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate Yuffie episode is now be gonna be called episode intermission so it's called intergrade because of the upgrades and now it's intermission good stuff square enix and while that might sound obvious, it was also obvious that Bitcoin had to come down at some point, hit a record high of over $63,000 yesterday, over 64,000, just big numbers from Bitcoin. It's down 1.38% right now, 62. Bitcoin, absolutely worthless. Don't invest in crypto, my friends. This is not financial advice, but as is the law, when Bitcoin does good things, GME, GameStop does other things up. 19% on the day, $167. This is keeping me on my toes every single day. I check out GameStop, I check out Bitcoin, and they're just wild. GameStop's looking for a new CEO. That brings it up 19%. And I think Mazda needs to up its game 19% or more because they have announced the MX-30 electric vehicle that's gonna be coming to the US next year. It looks kinda of okay. It has the front door that opens fine. It has the suicide doors at the back. It's a little bit weird. It's kinda of like that Hyundai but Tiburon that has the Veloster, whatever they call it now, where it has that rear door that swings open the other way. But the specs of it are just kinda of meh especially for coming out later this year. Only 124 miles on a single charge with a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery with only 144 horsepower and 200 pounds foot of torque. They better make this thing dang cheap because this is like a go around town electric vehicle. This is not a cross country electric vehicle. So the, the, the price better reflect that because it don't feel like Mazda is fully investing in this. But TCL is fully investing in their rollout phone with them announcing that you can have it up in three different sizes. You can either have the regular phone, which is only 6.5, 8.87 inches, or you can expand it out to a phablet of 8.85 inches, or you can fully extend it, get it to that rigid erect 10 inch tablet form that you always wanted it to roll out into, which is just, is there really that big of a difference? Okay, let me try to phrase this in a way that works here. Is there a big difference between 8.85 inches and 10 inches when you're feeling it in your hands? Like obviously you gotta use both hands at that point, but just holding it, it's still like, it's roughly the same feeling, right? I just like, I, I don't think I've ever had something grow on me from eight to 10 inches, but I'm just, I'm just saying, what's the point of it stopping right there if it can fully erect a size? Ford is erecting their Blue Cruise because they announced that they went on a 110,000 mile road trip for their autopilot competitor, where they can do hands-free highway driving that should be coming later this year. It's going to be part of the Co-Pilot 360 package that are in certain cars like the F-150 Limited. However, if you have a Mustang Mach-E or one of the F-150s that doesn't have the hardware, it's gonna cost you 600 bucks to get it. But allegedly this is actually hands-free, whereas Tesla's autopilot, you have to kind of do some torque vectoring 
on the wheel where it nags you every once in a while saying, hey, hey, keep your hands on the wheel because it doesn't use the camera that it's clearly spying on you with to document whether or not your eyes are on the road, whereas Blue Cruise actually has an eye monitoring thing where it says, hey, hey, you're not looking at the road, you're gonna crash, don't do it, bad. It doesn't speak to you, but you can speak to a lot more friends using Road Connect because this is a actually pretty neat piece of software that will allow you to use four different microphones and mix them all on your computer where you don't have to use a physical piece of hardware to get that done. However, you will have to use explicitly the NT-USB mic mini microphone from Rode in order to get this done, but this Rode Connect software could potentially replace something like the Rodecaster Pro, which I'm currently recording this episode of Hot News on. Absolutely love it, but it's a 600 piece of hardware for a hardware mixer. This is a software solution where you already bought the microphones and it's not gonna necessarily gonna cost you extra. This is Good job, bro. Love that. And I love nuclear spacecraft. That's just a phrase that rolls off my tongue very. Nuclear spacecraft. It's pronounced nuclear. Nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. DARPA has picked Lockheed Martin and Blue Origin to help build its nuclear spacecraft to do nukes in low Earth orbit and then blow its nuclear radiation to get places. Twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets. No big deal. And it's no big deal for AT&T and T-Mobile and Verizon to stop working together to try to get RCS text messaging as like a cohesive thing. The cross carrier messaging initiative is now dead. Verizon coming out saying that they decided to end their joint effort. T-Mobile rolling out Google messages as its RCS client. It looks like we're not gonna get a cohesive thing or Google's just gonna convince everybody with cash to use theirs. And Facebook's gonna convince you to use their VR by giving you features for free, so long as obviously you connect to your Facebook account. But the Oculus Quest 2 is now getting 120 hertz support, as well as support for AirLink, which is essentially replacing that cable that went to your computer. Now you can actually have applications running on your PC, wirelessly connecting to your Oculus Quest 2 instead of sideloading it into the VR device like you had to do previously. And how we did things with old photographs previously was apparently wrong. I found out today, this came out a little while ago, but uh, this is the first time hearing it. There's a new photo colorizing process Process that changes how they recolor vintage photos because in their explanation of this and actually makes a lot of sense with this time travel refotography as they're calling it one of the issues that happens was with the cameras that they used previously they just didn't work on the same color wavelengths that we do right now so that they overemphasize certain things that don't actually physically appear on the skin like with Abraham Lincoln right here he probably didn't have that many wrinkles but because of the wavelength of light that they were looking at you we actually weren't seeing what appears on the dermis. Your epidermis was showing and a little bit more with the cameras that they used previously. However, changing that and trying to recreate what happens with digital cameras today, you get this Instagram beautiful Abraham Lincoln right there. I'll let you contemplate that with this end of the episode of Hot News. Why don't you check out yesterday's episode right there? You can also check out the first episode of the week so that you can catch up on all of the hot tech news that's been going on, my friends. I'll catch you in tomorrow's episode. Stay frosty. Toasty.